Hello everyone, my name is Scott Falstrom and I work at Miracosta College. I worked on this project for the Flint water crisis and I, I think it's a really not just interesting for the students, it was very interesting for me to read up a lot of the research. So I've tried my best to make sure that this project could be used as a semester length project or a term length. Uh, it could also be used in uh, little chunks throughout the term which allows you as a teacher to be able to pick and choose items that you feel might be really relevant to particular parts of your curriculum. So a quick overview, um, I've given kind of an introduction page. You'll notice I've broken this project up into parts. Uh, I really thought that it was important for students to understand some of the background and the rationale behind the decisions that were made in Flint. Um, almost everything that I have has uh, links backing up all of the research that I've done here and it kind of moves through the process that created the problems. Uh, the initial uh, Department of Environmental Quality survey that came out, and so there's a lot of great statistics that can be done with that, uh, as well as the Virginia Tech independent data that was rejected later, uh, as well as a much larger sample size, more than 23,000 homes were surveyed, um, kind of going down the road as they began really checking the water quality and um, kind of part four, what's the, what's the social impact of that? So if you're looking through here, um, full data sets, I put a link in here for all the full data sets. I think it's important for you to have access to those. Uh, you can also go search the internet if you'd like to find uh, other, other sets. The skills that we talk about in this course uh, are located here. So it kind of really gets into calculating percentiles, some exploratory data analysis one proportion hypothesis test, we have get confidence intervals to estimate a mean, we have tests for means and uh, proportions, it's, it's, it's very extensive and depending on how far you get some of you may or may not be interested in using something like ANOVA. Um, so what I've done is I've tried to make it very clear where you would be using those different pieces and hopefully you can utilize these in your classroom. Really try to put the students in your class in the role of thinking through options. How could this have happened? What is happening? Because again, at the beginning, when we do statistics, we want that research question. What is happening? What can I conclude? And so try to put them in the, in the viewpoint of the investigators. Uh, I also ask them to check their own water. I think it's really important for them to kind of make this personal and they can actually look in their zip code and find what kind of uh, test results their water is getting. We go through all of the data and while I have put it in this uh, kind of Word document that's available to you, I've also provided links, as you saw earlier, to the actual data so students can use this um, going forward, making their own determinations using whatever software package you're choosing. Estimating a mean, so you'll notice I've, I've kind of walked through the basics. Again, I've left it open for you to modify if you so need to kind of say, hey, I'd like to modify the language there. Maybe you choose slightly different language for constructing confidence intervals or hypothesis tests. I want to leave that open to you as, as the teacher. And I really like this question here, task 7, thinking deeply about alternative hypotheses. I find this is a topic that is too often glazed over and I think if you really want to think about it, one of the problems that was that was noticed here is that someone was using an alternative hypothesis, which isn't wrong by itself, but the way they were looking at it required us to prove that the water was unsafe. And that's a really big difference. So instead of um, kind of assuming that the water is unsafe. So what is, your, what is your initial belief? Do you believe the water is safe or do you believe it's unsafe? Really good questions to make students think about how statistics can be used. Uh, the saga continued. Virginia Tech got involved. Citizen scientists is kind of the language that was used there as people in the community started testing water and really pushing for more change. We've also included the role of race and socioeconomic status. The majority of Flint residents are black, and in order to provide safe drinking water, people had to really spend quite a bit of money on filters to uh, remove the lead. So we look at that. We also take a look at home prices, trying to find out whether where you lived had an impact on the amount of lead contamination. I think all of these will be very interesting to students. And you, you may or may not be able to use some of those pieces. It depends on, on what you're covering. And lastly, I put at the end a lot of the additional resources that I think is really important. Thank you very much. I hope that you enjoy the project, and you can always reach out to me if you have questions or concerns. All right, off you go.